Hi folks. Here we are out in the capstone plot. You can't see it, but the back of that, the other side of that <clears throat> sign says capstone plot on it. This is what used to be the Learning Gardens Community Engagement capstone plot and will continue to be in the summer term while we have the Rutt Schneider folks working in the mindfulness garden that you can see over there in the distance. It's the summer classroom. Here we are at our Hoogle culture with lots of insects flying around. They're definitely <clears throat> more active with the sun this week. And our Hoogle culture has a lot of stuff growing on it. This um, purple topped plant is Lamium purpureum, or purple dead nettle. And that's a mint family relative that's a annual weed that is a first food for our ground nesting bumblebees and other bee species. We've got um, evidence of a calendula plant going to seed and dropping seed there. That's going to be covered up with flowers. Calendula officinalis is this bright orange one here. It comes in a variety of colors. Um, orange seems to predominate here. There's a slightly lighter orange over there. Uh, calendula, because it grows throughout the calendar, it's medicinal, it's a salve, it's a soother for skin. It can be made into a salve, I should say. We've got a raspberry here. Pineapple mint. This is a lavender. Some willow growing. Some narcissus. Bed straw or cleavers here. It's another common weed here at LGL. Um, <clears throat> and uh, as you can see, is happy to stick to my shirt. That's one of the ways that it spreads. Um, it's a medicinal, as many weeds are. Um, through settler colonialism, um, have shown up um, in Turtle Island, North America, South America, through intentional um, transplant, and then also through the guts of ruminants, um, domesticated species that were brought with colonizers. Um, and those often are here in disturbed spaces, um, spaces that have not gone through ecological succession. And we disturb this big time um, into a mound, Hoogle culture, and need to do some cutting and thinning here of those. But they're our friends, really. They're just trying to fill open niches. And so we're gonna come through and we're gonna say thank you. And also it's time to rest. So again, just all cleavers here past would have made me gasp. Calendula again, look how happy it looks. What else have we got going on? We've got an apple tree that um, have been seeking to um, kind of reshape. Um, it got pruned a little too hard in a lesson last year and is responding that way. That's okay. Um, we'll thin some of that out in uh, June or July. Um, it's got root suckers down there at the bottom. I don't know if you can see those right by that birdhouse. Um, <clears throat> apples and many fruit trees um, named varieties are grafted onto what's called root stock. And root stock uh, has been selected for specific qualities of what it does for the overall size and health of the plant. So some tolerate heavy soils, some drier soils, um, some keep them extra small, um, and some just semi-standard, so still very large trees. This is on a dwarfing rootstock, uh, most certainly, and has not been trained adequately for that, but we're working back. And, you know, it's a long-term crop. You can always come back to uh, fruit trees and um, we're going to be making a video here soon of um, another apple tree that we're going to be grafting new varieties onto the top of and that's something that commercial or orchardists do all the time and um, I'll be telling folks more about Home Orchard Society, a local nonprofit um, that shares heirloom fruit, wood and fruit. Um, they are um, being affected as well. They were unable to host their big fundraiser where they give out plant material. Uh, and
and so I have um, ordered a lot of scion wood or bud wood from them um, to graft onto the trees and uh, that's something that happens annually so hopefully in the fall um, we'll have um, more safety and, and uh, the opportunity to go out host events and would encourage folks to um, check out their all about fruit show which allows you to taste hundreds of varieties of heirloom fruit and learn about grafting and um, fruit tree care on a home scale and um, it's really an incredible way to learn about lots of different varieties of fruit um, so that apple tree over there oh shoot i was going to tell you um, on those root suckers on that tree uh, a couple years ago i grafted some varieties that's why i started that story and uh then in the bed next to them have transplanted out the um what was grafted onto those suckers so they can become their own little fruit trees and here we're going to be looking at the mindfulness sanctuary of course and this beautiful asian pear um, I think this is Shinseki, or 20th century. Um, I've been caring for this tree for a couple of years now, um, trying to open it up. Um, see the pollinators there going after those plum blossom or uh, pear blossoms. Um, it's still early, it's still cool, um, so pollinators are um, moving slow. Um, probably some blue orchard bees or uh, mason bees are out working on these early crops. See the cherry over there. Just going to take you over to the farmer and residence plot here. We've got, you see it's staked out. We've got some irrigation mess to clean up. Um, had a compost pile there and that's getting spread. A little weedy. The, ge the geese have come through and cleaned up any um, brassicas or cabbage family members that are in their reach. Um, got some overwintered leeks and then some that are out of their the geese's reach um, of kale here that's robbing right now r-a-a-b and making um, all of these flowering stalks and you can see on this one here uh, there's a little um, aphid damage going on and here's a fly that is disguised like a bee and then we've got um, what was under black plastic here waiting to be sewn um, still got a little bit more what black plastic you see is going to get flipped over onto this portion over here so that um, all the weeds will be um, suffocated basically we'll take all the crops out and flip that over and that's where we'll put peppers tomatoes squash cucumbers our, our um, hot season warm season varieties and just this week we've got um, uh, lettuce mix planted here um, in this row, about 20 feet of that. We've got some spinach transplants that I started in the greenhouse and then hardened off in that uh, hoop structure there. Hardening off is a process of gradually acclimating um, tender annual vegetable starts to um, being outdoors. I'm not very good at it, but I'm working on it. So they look okay. They look okay. They could look happier, but they look pretty okay. Some spinach there, and then all the rest of the bed are scallions uh, or green onions, and also started in um, trays inside. Coming down the row, we've got um, purple sprouting broccoli and cabbage that are just heading up right now, hoping they don't bolt or try and make seed rather than making a nice, tasty, crunchy head. Um, got a flat of collards over here that we're going to be putting in um, what's under black plastic right now. Under this uh, row cover or rime, um, those are a couple of different names for this spun polyester um, product that helps um, keep pests out, um, though this is a pretty old sheet and so it's got some holes in it. It's not probably very effective for keeping pests out, but um, can <clears throat> keep the geese out, which is important. And for our little baby cabbages that are under there, that's a whole row of cabbages. And uh, also helps to raise the temperature a little bit. You can put this directly, this is on hoops, but you can put this directly on a bed for early greens, like arugula and, and uh, 
<clears throat> lettuce mixes and the like, and that can help raise the temperature a little bit and decrease um, evaporation. So just helps your, your plants get a good start if you can find a piece of that. Now here you can see we've got <clears throat> this row marked and we've got uh, 20 feet of maca ozette fingerling potato. That's a, a arc of taste slow food heirloom potato fingerling. And it's really unique because um, it rather than uh, it going to Europe with uh, settlers and colon uh, colonizers um, and then coming back to uh, North America, South America, Turtle Island, um, it went with the Spanish galleons up the west coast from Peru to the Maca uh, nation on the Olympic Peninsula and was stewarded there for hundreds of years um, before it was um, introduced into the Slow Food Arc of Taste, which is a, a food breeding project of Slow Food Movement, which um, I'm sure I'll prattle on about at some point. Um, on either side of that, um, I didn't mark it down, but I'm pretty sure this is arugula. We have a fun push behind cedar that's a really um, intuitive design I'll, I'll show you later. Um, but we're hoping to get a crop of arugula out of this bed first, and then uh, if you get to listen to the interview that I recorded with Mike Stoner, we'll be hilling up our potatoes. You can see the little baby potatoes just poking through. So hopefully by the time we make our first harvest of arugula, we'll be able to just chop that in and, um, and hill up the potatoes so our potatoes can keep doing their thing. Um, this is supposed to be carrots, and you can see that pile of burlap there. Um, a real great tr trick for um, cultivating carrots is to put um, burlap on top. They have to be sown very shallowly and they are um, they take very long to germinate, like 10 to 21 days. And so the burlap just helps reduce evaporation and um, you know um, the solarizing of the soil that would otherwise um, dry it out and can help um, germination with carrots though. I think these ones got away. I don't know. I, I keep seeing things poke through, but I'm I'm um, cautiously uh, I'm cautious that that's not going to work. And then here's some more arugula right here. Okay, that's a whole 12 minutes that I spent just walking around talking. Make my way to the greenhouse, do some watering, and uh, point out some of the starts that we have inside.